Welcome to Morning Prayers. Morning, Reverend Dave. Good morning, Barbara. How is everybody? I've got my um, cup of tea. Look at that. Very, very patriotic. Look at that. More tea, Vicar. No, no, no. That's that's uncalled for, Barbara, <laughs> I tell you. We're, we're very blessed to have a team leading our prayers, and um, we're very blessed that Vicky does evening prayer. And do you know what? Um, Nick Hall popped up the other night as well. He did, didn't he? Didn't he do well? He did. A disappointed not to see the cats, though. Oh, well, maybe maybe next time. But it's nice to have a variety of voices, yeah. isn't it? Leading us in prayer. It, 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 is, it is indeed. It is indeed. So, what a wonderful autumn day this is. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Um, getting towards the end of October now. It's flying by, isn't it? It is indeed, and um, I don't know what's like where you are, Barbara, but um, everybody around here is really generous because they keep treating us at the moment with fireworks and letting them <laughs> off in stra strange times and strange places. So I keep finding empty um, firework rocket containers all over the place. Yeah, well, two blocks away from you, where I am, it's pretty much the same. And I know some people and animals yeah. find it yeah. quite distressing, don't they? <laughs> Yeah. Is it is it you that's doing it? No, I, I is it you you and Ben that's doing it. Do you know? I I I think they look very pretty, but I would object to the money just going up in the air, up in smoke. I know. I've not seen many fireworks on display, strangely. I, I haven't seen any fireworks shops popping up like they normally do either. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, we're going to start today off on a bang, <laughs> with a bang. <laughs> Oh, as so, we, yeah. so what you did there. Tenuous yeah. link, yes. As we, we as we turn our hearts now to the Lord and we dedicate this day to him and we fix our minds on him. Mm -hmm. 
and we ask, O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion. Who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding. And hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. The night has passed. And this wonderfully beautiful day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. And our psalm today, we are going to read antiphonally because it is Psalm 106. The Lord remembered his covenant. Alleluia, give thanks to the Lord for he is gracious, for his faithfulness endures forever. Who can express the mighty acts of the Lord or show forth all his praise? Blessed are those who observe what is right and always do what is just. Remember me, O Lord, in the favour you bear for your people. Visit me in the day of your salvation. That I may see the prosperity of your chosen and rejoice in the gladness of your people and exult in your, with your inheritance. We have sinned like our forefathers. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. In Egypt they did not consider your wonders, nor remember the abundance of your faithful love. They rebelled against the Most High at the Red Sea. But he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his power to be known. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it was dried up. So he led them through the deep, as through the wilderness. He saved them from the adversary's hand and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. As for those that troubled them, the waters overwhelmed them. There was not one of them left. Then they believed his words and sang aloud his praise. But soon they forgot his deeds and would not wait for his counsel. A craving seized them in the wilderness and they put God to the test in the desert. He gave them their desire, but sent a wasting sickness upon, among them. They grew jealous of Moses in the camp, and of Aaron the Holy One of the Lord. So the earth opened and swallowed up Dathan, and covered the company of Abiram. A fire was kindled in their company, the flame burnt up the wicked. They made a calf at Horeb and worshipped the molten image. Thus they exchanged their glory for the image of an ox that feeds on hay. They forgot God, their saviour, who had done such great things in Egypt. Wonderful deeds in the land of Ham, 
and fearful things at the Red Sea. So he would have them destro have destroyed them, had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the breach, to turn away his wrath from consuming them. Then they scorned the promised land, and would not believe his word, but murmured in their tents, and would not heed the voice of the Lord. So he lifted his hand against them, and swore to overthrow them in the wilderness. To disperse their descendants among the nations, and to scatter them throughout the lands. They joined themselves to the Baal of Peor, and ate sacrifices offered to the dead. They provoked him to anger with their evil deeds, and a plague broke out among them. Then Phineas stood up and interceded, and so the plague was stayed. This was counted to him for righteousness throughout all generations for ever. They angered him also at the waters of Meribah, so that Moses suffered for their sake. For they so embittered his spirit that he spoke rash words with his lips. They did not destroy the peoples as the Lord had commanded them. They mingled with the nations and learned to follow their ways. So that they worshipped their idols, which became to them a snare. Their own sons and daughters they sacrificed to evil spirits. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters. Which they offered to the idols of Canaan, and the land was defiled with blood. Thus they were polluted by their actions, and in their wanton deeds went whoring after the gods. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, and he abhorred his inheritance. He gave them over to the hand of the nations, and those who hated them ruled over them. So their enemies oppressed them, and put them in subjection under their hand. Many a time did he deliver them, but they rebelled through their own devices, and were brought down through their wickedness. Nevertheless, he saw their adversity, when he heard their lamentation. He remembered his covenants with them, and relented according to the greatness of his faithful love. He made them also to be pitied by all who had taken them captive. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting and to everlasting. And let all the people say, Amen. Alleluia. The Lord remembered his covenant. Holy God, when our memories blot out your kindness and we ignore your patient love, remember us, remake us, and give up to us, poor sinners, the rich inheritance of Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Amen. We turn to the Song of Peace for our canticle based on Isaiah chapter 2. Spirit of God, teach us your ways that we may walk in the path of peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Spirit of God, 
Teach us your ways that we may walk in the paths of peace. Our scripture reading today is in the book of um, Philippians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 12 to the end of the chapter. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers and sisters, having been made confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, dare to speak the word with great boldness and without fear. Some proclaim Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. These proclaim Christ out of love, knowing that I have been put here for the defence of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but intending to increase my suffering in my imprisonment. What does it matter? Just this, that Christ is proclaimed in every way, whether out of false motives or true. And in that I rejoice. Yes, I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will result in my deliverance. It is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame in any way, and that by my speaking with all boldness, Christ will be exalted now as always in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labour for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, we ask that you will illuminate your word to our hearts and to our minds, to our spirits, to our souls, and that you will speak to us this day in the name of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, um, I don't know whether you uh, remember Weebles. Um, if you know anything about Weebles, that's Weebles, not Weevils, uh, Weebles. Uh, Weebles wobble, but they, they, they never fall down, do they? And Paul's a bit like a weeble. It doesn't matter what you do with him. He always comes back up again, you know, and you get some people like that in their lives. And so um, I, um, I don't know whether this, 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 this is good or bad, but one of my um, sad experiences is that um, I'm old enough to remember Monty Python, which um, some people hated, but I found it hilarious. And there is a scene in... Um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, where uh, there's, there's a fight with the Black Knight. And in this fight with the Black Knight, it's ridiculous. Um, his arm is cut off and this blood comes spurting out and it's, a, it's just a flesh wound. And then his other arm is cut off and, and he's there and he's saying, come on, come on, you coward. And then his legs are cut off. And basically what you have is a torso and a head. And... Um, Arthur walks off and the Black Knight said, come back, you coward, and take me home. 
And it's it's an over exaggeration of sometimes that that British um, traditional stiff upper lip. It doesn't matter what you do. Um, I will show no emotion whatsoever. Well, Paul's not like that. He does show emotion, but in all seriousness, whatever happens to him, whether it's good or bad, he sees it as an opportunity to glorify Christ. Now, I heard a few years ago um, of a lady in Africa, and it depends whether you see an opportunity or whether you see a problem. And she was praying to the Lord. She had no money. She was in uh, a very rural part of Africa. And the only thing that she owned was a field, and the field was full of termite mounds, <laughs> just nothing but termite mounds on the land, which she wanted to farm on. And as she prayed, this thought dropped into her mind that she could turn the mud and the clay in these termite mounds and make them into bricks. And at first she thought, ooh, but then she pursued the idea. And eventually, um, what looked like a disaster that she couldn't grow any food on her land turned into the beginnings of a business where she began to make bricks and sold them and began to make a living because she had that vision from God. And out of that living, she began to employ other people on her land who also made bricks. And it gave her an income and a lifestyle and an income for the people that she employed. So how do we see our current circumstances? And it's looking pretty grim out there, you know, in terms of people are losing their jobs, uh, the people that, that, that we know are losing their jobs because the hotels, some of them are closing and they don't know when they're going to be open next. With the hotels closing, that means it's less money for people to spend. It's going to affect the shops. It's going to affect the whole town. And we're, we're in, I think, for a testing period as we approach Christmas. And, of course, there will be no let-up with the, the advertisers on television because we're still going to get the Christmas adverts. We're still going to get those... Um, images thrown at us, you know, um, of, you know, you, you, you need to buy Tia Maria or you need to buy chocolates or you need to get the latest fashions or you need to get this or she needs this or he needs that. And we're going to be bombarded and, and the poor kids are going to be bombarded with the latest toys. There's going to be no let up, but there's going to be less money. We've got a testing period coming along. Where's the opportunity in that? I think for Paul, the opportunity will be that whatever the circumstances are, now, he's, 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 he's a prisoner. He's not in strange ways. He's not lock, locked up in a cell, but he's a prisoner of the Romans awaiting trial before Caesar. So he, he, he has a certain amount of freedom, you know, and, and we can see um, at the end of the Acts of the Apostles that when he's in Rome, he has a certain amount of freedom but he's still chained to, to a Roman soldier. And he's still in confinement because it talks here about the whole of the imperial guard. So Paul is captive, but Paul sees it as an opportunity to show the grace of Christ through his life and to encourage other people. So somehow through these hard circumstances, maybe the opportunity for the church here in Blackpool is that we need to be praying for our neighbours. We need to be saying to them when the opportunity arises, I don't know what I can do to help, but I will pray for you. We need to be standing in unity with those who are going to go through hard times, whether that's providing food for them, whether it's just being there for our friends and our family. But let's see every circumstance that we go through and, you know, um, for now, the church is open and we don't want to even think about another lockdown, but we don't know what's ahead of us, actually. But let's use every cir single circumstance as an opportunity to share the love and the grace of Christ through our prayers, through caring for one another and being a witness to the world around us. You know, one of the opportunities that came out of the original lockdown was that we started doing this online. I mean, who would have thought that we'd, we'd be doing this 12 months ago? 
but we do. And it's opened up a, a whole new avenue of sharing prayers with people who either can't come out of the homes or with, with the fact that the church isn't open as much as it used to be. And there are people watching who perhaps weren't coming to the church on a regular basis, and you're most welcome. It's great that you join us. But with every difficult situation, when we look at the life of Paul, when we look at the life of Jesus, when we look at the prophets in the Old Testament, adversity is always turned by God into an opportunity for something more creative to develop. So God bless every single one of you today. And let's pray. Lord, we ask that although the circumstances are tough and it's not easy by any means, enable us through the grace of the Holy Spirit to see the opportunities where it would be easy to give up, to see the opportunities where it seems that something's coming to an end, to see the opportunities in every encounter that we have this day, either in person, over the phone or online. May all things be done for your honour, praise and glory and for the encouragement of your people. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh man, oh man. That's um, quite thought provoking actually because I don't know about you, um, in, when you witness people going through difficult times um, and how they face that, it has such an impact on you as an individual watching yeah. other people that you know and yeah. love, how they cope. And some are so stoic yeah. and so um, res um, resolved on clinging on to the word of God that it's really yeah. an encouragement, isn't it? it? It is a fantastic encouragement. And as I said on Sunday, you know, it, it, it and I, I mentioned it last night at the, the APCM, how could we forget? But, you know, we recently had a gift day in the midst of this environment and the generosity generosity of people is absolutely fantastic and people who've worked in places like Africa and, and Asia and some of the poorer communities of the world um, they always say something very similar that the poorer the community the more generous the people mm. that they might not have much but what they have they share yeah. and, and, and that goes so much further sometimes than somebody who's a millionaire you know um, I remember, you've set me off now, Barbara, but this won't take long. Um, back in the 1980s, when the Iron Curtain was, was, was sort of still in place, somehow some, um, some Christians who were in East Germany had managed to come to England to visit the churches who'd been praying for them. And so, as, as British people do, that they were hosted, and on the Sunday... They put before this German couple, this East German couple, um, a Sunday lunch, and they gave them, and, and they, they gave them a plate each. They looked at one another, and they put one of the plates on one side, and they put the other plate in the middle, and they shared a plate. And the host said, "What are you doing? You don't, you don't need to share that food." And, and they're automatically because they knew nothing else was no gave it and have it tomorrow. Because they didn't know where their, their next food was coming from, but their culture was whatever they had, they shared, and and they appreciated it. Whereas we were having a Sunday lunch or whoever it was, and they were like, "No, that will do for tomorrow, so we don't waste food." Yeah, you, you know, didn't people mind? So in adversity, some we see um, tremendous generosity. Yeah, and it's it's always it's learning to trust God with the small things. And he shows his faithfulness, and then you're able to trust him in the bigger, more difficult times, aren't you? Yeah. 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 So, shall we return to our liturgy? Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments. Oh. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Oh, mercy, the wonder of your law. 
Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just praise you for the wonderful God that you are, and we bring to you our thanksgivings and prayers today knowing that nothing is impossible for you and that out of every adversity you will always see this as an opportunity for good we just take this moment to bring before you those things that are pressing on each and every one of us Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, in times that are trying, we pray for our ICU units. We pray for all the medical staff that are working tirelessly at risk to themselves. We pray that there are enough beds for those in need. We pray for everybody that is working on the front line, no matter what their role. We ask for your protection, Lord, for your strength and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Pray for the decisions our government and councils are going to be making. Lord, May they bear in mind the whole of the population, but those that are vulnerable too, especially. Those that are finding this a struggle. May their decisions be wise, compassionate, and carefully made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our schools, colleges and universities, particularly those that have suffered from huge outbreaks. We pray for all those students that are having to isolate. May they have all that they need. May they know the importance of in isolating and protecting others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, may we have eyes open to see those who ne need our compassion and our care. May we find new opportunities to share the good news about you to those who 
who are finding it hard, maybe are struggling with worry, anxiety, mental health, economic and financial problems. Lord, you know us all individually. You hold us in your right hand and you never forsake or leave us. Help us to hold on to this truth today. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Lord, we, we bring to before you all those who are grieving today. You have suffered loss and are overwhelmed with sadness. May they experience the comfort of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, for as much as without you, we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Absolutely. Don't you always feel so much better after you've started the day off in prayer? Absolutely, yeah. And uh, I think spiritually, I mean, di people are different. We, you know, some people are night owls, but f for me... Um, yeah, it, it, it has to be the way to start the day. Yeah, especially when, when life might not be going so well and difficult. It's it's that nourishment for the soul, isn't it? So It is nourishment for the soul and the spirit mm -hmm. to sustain us. Just like we have a cup of tea and whatever we have in the morning, we, we need it for our soul and our spirit. Yes, absolutely. So you'll be about right, ready for another cup of tea, will you? Oh, I need another brew, yeah. <laughs> so, no, whatever you're doing um, today, we hope it's a really blessed day. The sun is shining and we hope you can find yep. some joy in it. And um, there is a service tomorrow. There is, in church, 11 o'clock. In church, 11 o'clock. Yes. And people yes. have to book. ACP, munch, without the munch. Yeah. And, um, munch yeah, Reverend Emma will be back on Thursday morning with morning prayers. So whatever you're doing, have a wonderful day. Sings the Father's song, calls the sun to wake the dawn and run the course of day till evening falls in crimson rain. His fingerprints on flakes of snow, his breath upon the spinning globe, he charts the eagle's flight, commands the newborn baby's cry. Sure.
on his face. The ageless one, time's embrace, unveiled the Father's plan of reconciling God and man. A second Adam warned the earth, whose brainless life would break the curse, whose death would set us free to live with him eternally. Wonders of creation's king. Creation longs for his return when Christ shall reign upon the earth. The bitter wars that rage, our birth pains are the coming age. When he renews the land and sky. We'll sing the reply with one resplendent theme, the glory of our God and King. Hallelujah! Let all creation stand and sing. Hallelujah! Fill the earth with songs of worship. Tell the wonders of creation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all creation stand and sing. Hallelujah. Fill the earth with songs of worship. Tell the wonders of creation's king. Fill the earth. Fill the earth with songs of worship. Tell the wonders of creation's king. Fill the earth with songs of worship. 